Hello and welcome to my tutorial on how to make a melee weapon in UK. First we're going to make the melee weapon in Blender and rig it so that it can be used as a skeletal mesh in UDK. Okay, now we start up Blender and we're going to make a very quick uh, melee weapon. Just delete all this stuff. and let's start off with a simple cylinder first things first always make sure that the pivot is at zero and the pivot for this should be where the hand of the the, the handle of the met weapon is the hilt so for this dimension let's set up the grid first this is a useful thing for blender to set up the grid if you put it at the scale of 32 32 units is about a third of a character. 32, 16, 8 works well. And then we'll set this to 0, set the cursor to 0. We want it to be about 64 high. And we want the hilt to be around there. And then you can go on origin, origin to 3D cursor, which is that thing I just set to 0. Okay, now we need to add the bone. To add the bone, we go add armature single bone to create a bone, an armature bone. Scale the bone up to the top of the weapon. And then you need to skin it to the bone. I do this by going by select going back into object mode, selecting the mesh, going on add constraint, child of and selecting the armature and the bone and then you click set, set inverse to make it upright oh, make it back to its reference pose again all right next we need to do a small animation so we select the bone go into pose mode and up here we can go onto the animation window this gives us a nice animation it's, this gives us a nice set of animation to do. So I'm just going to make a quick animation here. I'm going to start keyframes to be automatic and going from 0 to 30. So set, press I to set a keyframe and set all my keyframes to be of the location and rotation. So Set the first keyframe, move it forward a bit, up a bit, rotate it on the y axis a bit. If you want to get the grid back up to the size I had it before, just go and display. Set that to 32 and set it to 8. Gives a better idea. And that gives us a better idea of how it works. Thanks, well. Okay. So now we have the animation. We'll make that animation into an action. So we need to change this to the NLA editor. And click the little snowflake icon here to make the armature an action. 
This isn't absolutely necessary, but I think it's a good thing to get used to because it makes arranging your animations a lot easier and it means you can also have multiple actions for multiple fire modes. Okay. Now we've got that done, we set it back to zero and go back, now the animation is done, we go back to the default setting, set the pose to zero, but to object mode. One little extra thing that I forgot to mention is that for some reason Unreal doesn't like it when you've got a scaled up object like this and it will scale the the axis of animation as well. So you end up with a Z axis that just goes flying through the roof. So to set this scale here to one all round to normalize it, just press just go control A and click apply scale and that sets it to one. Select the uh, mesh, go on export to FBX and we ex export it to an FBX file. Two things to point out with an FBX file, forward should be X and up should be Y up because that's how Unreal is aligned compared to uh, Blender. And we don't really need the default take, we want all the actions taken in, we made all the actions and that should be it export FBX and that's how to make a blender weapon right now we need to load up UDK and go on to import import the file you just made make sure it is set to skeletal mesh and all these settings that's Press OK to import. And now we should have our weapon and its animation. Works perfectly. Save that. And now we need to add the sockets to the to the weapon so that we can trace between top and the bottom as it swings so we know whether it hits something or not. So to do this we go into the socket manager up here, create new socket, we've only got one bone in this but if you've got multiple bones put, put the one at the, the closest to the bottom as this one and then name it start socket. And then we create a new socket and if you had multiple bones and there's one closer to the top you choose that one but here we just got one, so then we do end socket. And with this socket, we move it up to the top. And there's the sockets done. And we just exit that, make sure we save the package. And that's it imported into Unreal. Right, now we need to unload Unreal X Editor. This is a really good IDE recently released for UDK and it comes with some really nifty features and I definitely recommend it to people. So we are going to use the weapon wizard that comes with it. It's a really good way to uh, make a weapon from scratch really quickly. So first we need the name, name line stick and I'm going to add weapon after it just because I like to. Uh, and in the default properties, I need to get the weapon mesh, which you can find on UDK. If you go on to the tutorial, if you go on to the package you've got, and select the skeletal mesh, and then copy full name to clipboard. Then you can go back to this and paste it in. And paste it in for the same one. Weapon mesh is... Uh, First person mesh, this is the high detailed mesh so, which the uh, person holding the weapon gets to see and the pickup mesh is the third person mesh which is what uh, people see when it's when they're seeing it externally not actually holding it. These sounds, you can change them if you want, I'm keeping them the same. 
we don't need muzzle f uh, muzzle flash. Um, uh, mini weapons don't muzzle flash or anything. And uh, need the anim set, so we do the same thing as we did for the skeletal mesh. For the ammo count, we there is an ammo unless you want to add some kind of durability, in which case you can have use it like a percentage of the durability of the weapon. But for now. I am just going to call it zero. Inventory group. I'm using four. It doesn't really matter too much. Damage rate. That's how much damage it does. And the zero and the one are the different fire modes. So zero would be left click, and one would be right click. So ten and twenty. Momentum is the momentum behind the hit. I don't really know what that does, unfortunately. Fire rate, this is how quickly you can swing the melee weapon, so if you set it to 1, that's 1 second per swing, so you can fire rate every second, swing it every second. Click next, and we get to the attachment, this is what deals with the third person view of the uh, mesh. So you put your third person mesh in there, It's already it does it automatically for you, you want the scale to be 1, we haven't really got any scale issues we don't want any kind of muzzle flash and then we click next and we get the ammo we can't have any ammo mesh well I can't because I haven't got I haven't got static mesh for this but you could put that in and have it like a uh, repair tool or something just put one in there just in case you wanted to do that and damage clash this is the damage for the weapon uh, I don't really know what these values do, but you could probably find out with messing around with them in the editor. I mean, it's not a bullet, so I'll just I'll tick that. And there we've completed the weapon wizard. In X editor, under if we refresh that by opening it again, under Unreal Script Wizard, we've got our four classes. And now we need to make the compiler compile them. So to do that, we go start. Open the UDK folder, go to development, SRC, rename this to whatever you want, I'm going to melee tutorial, uh, you can name that to whatever, just remember the name because now we are going to go back to the root and go to the UDK game config default engine folder, default engine.ini, and under these two things, because these two packages, because we use classes in those packages, so they must be compiled first. We add plus edit packages equals melee tutorial or whatever you have named your folder. And we save that. So now they should compile. So we go back to the editor. I'm using 64 bit computer, so I'm using 64 bit compiler and compile. And it should compile. Uh, we, we need to close the, the UDK editor because it interferes with the compiler. So exit that and compile and we'll get back to you when it's compiled. Right, we have all these warnings here. This is because we've blanked out some of the uh, options because we don't need them. So we'll go through them and uh, change them. So to change Unreal Script Wizard to what we've renamed it, we just minimize it and reopen it and there it is, MIDI tutorial. So under ammo online, under stick ammo on line 14, oops. the stick ammo on line 14, we have um, an unresolved reference to the static mesh because we never entered one, but we can just get rid of that. And that's all that's wrong with that. And under attach, there's all these empty muzzle flashes, so we just get rid of them. Under damage, there's anything under weapon. Again, there's some empty muzzle flashes. We'll get rid of them. Right, so now if you compile that. Oh, and um, there's a hand. That, that it, property is irrelevant. There's also these properties here, which aren't that important either, which you can get rid of. Now I'll compile that and test it out. Now we just need to go in the UDK editor and create a little test map. If we 
go on to so now we've got like the default map which we'll use we'll just go into view world properties game type and we want UT deathmatch we have to use UT game derivatives of classic game types because they're using UT weapon as our base class so we save that Save the current level and we'll name it in maps as test map. Or we'll say that's something else. Test map one. And uh, now if we just enter the game. And we go and use the command give weapon melee tutorial. That's the folder name dot stick underscore weapon, which is the script name. Ooh, we get a weapon. Now, that happened because uh, we haven't set up any kind of shot cost, so it assumes it's got no ammo, so it gets rid of it automatically. So if we just quickly go shot cost for the first fire mode equals zero, and shot cost for the second fire mode equals zero. So now, when we compile that. When we compile that, we can go onto UDK game, and now we can set up our startup map to test map. That's that one. Just so that when we in a log when we load it, disable startup movies. So now that when we go in UDK game, we can start testing our map, testing our weapon straight away. I've got the previous test map there. Try that. Go straight in. And as you can see, nothing's really happening. But if we go onto third person view, you can see the weapon there. It's probably best to disable sound. I'll just go. Let's exit it. Disable sound. Um, and yes, yeah, so there's a few uh, things I've missed. Uh, if you go onto the UDK editor, there's one thing we need to do. We need to go onto our anim set, go to our animation, and rename it. Weapon fire. And now, when we go into our test map and load it up, we get our animation. Save all the packages. Now, when we go into our test map and load our weapon, we get a weapon with animation. But as you can see, the pivot point is off at the moment. But this is a, there's a special variable for that to change the pivot point. X will move the weapon forward, and Z will move the weapon down or up, depending on which way you go. So that and compiled should give us a melee weapon which attacks but uses an invisible bullet so 
so there you go. You could also move it to the side if you wanted. And now we have all this done. We can start to think about how to stop this instant instant fire bullet and truly have a accurate melee weapon. So the first thing we need to do for a uh, melee weapon is to create a few variables and I'll explain them as I go. So our first variable is an array of actors. When I first made the uh, melee weapon it you had a problem where it would hit the actor multiple times so this array is used to make sure that you don't hit an actor multiple times so every time you hit an actor it puts it into the hit array so then you know you've hit it so you don't hit it again and two more variables to naming two more name variables are start socket and end socket which are the names of the sockets on the mesh that that can that will we'll chase between now to to the way the weapons work is that when you press fire it puts it into a state called weapon firing and when that state begins, it play it plays the fire effects, the animation, and sets the timer for it to play the animation again, which is the refire timer. And this is this state is kept going while the, the mouse button is held down. Um, once the mouse button is let go, it stops all animations and stops all firing effects and all all uh, firing logic. It's quite simple. It's all done with uh, flags set by just you clicking. So we need simulated simulated state weapon firing and in that state we need uh, a begin state. So simulated Simulated event begin begin state name previous state name and in this the first thing we need to do is check if the weapon has ammo. A few things we need to do in the state when it starts. Check if the weapon can fire so we can use the has ammo function which checks the shot cost against how much it costs to fire and sees if you can fire the weapon and if you can't it will send a it will destroy send a uh, notification that the weapon is empty which will unequip it immediately and return back to the uh, it just return back to the uh, code there's a few things that are that I've just kept the same in as the uh, UT weapon class like this I haven't tested whether it works without this but for now I'll just keep it all in this is just logging debugging then you it plays the fire effects so it calls the function to play fire effects with the current fire mode that depends on which button has been pressed and sets a refire timer gets the fire interval for that fire mode not a repeating timer and the function is called refire check timer and that's the begin state the next state 
is the end state. So when we stop firing, so simulated event, simulated event, and name next state name. When we exit the firing state, we need to set our hit array to nothing. So we set the length to zero. This means that we don't have uh, any kind of any kind of leakage of the uh, actors that have already been hit into the next time you decide to fire. And then we just need to just add this little thing that's on the uh, UT weapon class. Again, I don't quite know whether we need it, but I'm adding it anyway. And finally, we just need to clear the timer so that it doesn't start calling the refire check function when we are out of the state. And we notify that the weapon is finished firing. I think this is used for AI so that they know when the weapon has stopped. And again, we're just uh, re-implementing some of the UT weapon code here. And then we return. Next thing we need to do is the refire check timer function. So do simulated function. Ooh, actually we forgot to add the end state to that. Simulated function refire check timer. And in this we need to check if need to check a few things before we refire so if the weapon should be put down as in we've run out of ammo or uh, we've changed weapon and it need or we decide to drop the weapon for some reason we need to put the weapon down do that we do this we inform the inventory why weapon was put down and call the put down weapon put down weapon function and return so we don't continue executing the code And a second if statement is needed to check if the weapon can fire again. If it should refire. And if it should refire, we should set the hit array length to zero. So we reset that hit array because we're initiating a new swing of the weapon and play the animation for the weapon and set the refire timer again just copy it from there and if if none of these conditions are met, then we simply have finished firing. So we handle finished firing, which puts the weapon down, and return the function. Now, when the weapon fires, it will play the animation, and we are going to use that animation to trace, to, uh, trace between the sockets, so that when the animation is playing, 
it's moving the sockets towards whatever we're trying to hit. And if it does hit, uh, a trace will return true, and we'll be able to take use a take damage function on the actor. So to do this, when we're in this state, we want to hijack the fun the tick function. This is a bit of a not so nice way of doing it. I'm sure there's a better way to do this. But for now, it seems to work. Because the tick function is very resource intensive to do this constantly. Every frame. So to get the, the positions of the sockets in the world space, uh, we use a function in skeletal mesh component called get socket world location and rotation and we send the start socket name and the start and the start variable to output it to and we do the same here for the end socket and the end variable end vector And after that, we will make a function called weapon trace, which takes the end and the start vectors. And this function will be used to trace between the trace between the top and the bottom of the weapon, and see if we have hit anyone. First thing we need to do is the trace itself, which would be make up. We need a few variables to do, so we make some local variables vector hit. Do vector hit location vector hit hit normal. These are the typical vectors you use when you're doing a trace. And local actor hit actor. So this will be the variable we store the actor we have hit. And when we do, then to do the trace itself, we do hit actor. That's what we're going to store the variable in. Equals trace, which is a function used globally through Unreal in actors. Uh, take trace we take the hit location but these are out variables so when they when the function is executed it it puts the results into these variables which is sent back to this function hit normal that's another out variable and we put in the end location and the start location and we put true or something And then we see if it has hit something. So if hit actor is not equal to none, then we do we know we've hit something. This is a very easy to do if statement. Very useful, especially when you want to see if something exists or not and avoid errors. So now this is where we use the hit array. Because we want to make sure that as well as they hit, we hit something, we need to make sure it's not something we've already hit. So you do if hit array dot find. Let's find, look for the array for the hit actor we've already hit. And if it equals, if it brings back an index underscore none, which is means it's not found anything, then that's fine. That's we want that to be true. We don't want it to find anything. We want it to be a new hit. And if the hit actor can be damaged as well. So if it can take damage. 
And if all those are true, then we can do hit actor dot take damage. We take the instant hit damage we set er we set earlier in uh, in the wizard. Taking the current fire mode. Take uh, the instigator is the owner of this weapon, so we do pawn. Uh, cast the owner of this weapon to pawn, and take the control of that to set it as the instigator take damage function. And give it the hit location from the trace and the velocity times an extra little hundred. And the damage class is whatever we whatever we wanted for our damage, which whatever we made for our damage, which is stick damage in this case, it might be different for yours. And once that's done, we subtract the ammo from the f from the uh, ammo count. take away the shot cost. This will be zero in most cases. Some of you might want to add durability which is where it gets subtracted here when it hits something. You could change that. And then we add to the hit array this actor so that we don't hit him again in this, sing in this swing. And then we have the weapon trace done. And that would basically give us a very accurate way of seeing if we've really hit something and applying damage. And it works really well. Uh, just a little thing. I found that helps. This, If we enter this begin, finish, finish, and in and in node sequence skeletal mesh component mesh find anim node weapon fire anim current fire mode Uh, this will finish the, any animation that's already going on on the weapon if we begin this state again. So it resets it, basically. There's a few more things we need to do, but that's most of the coding done now. So basically, when we click, it begins the state. It checks if the ammo, if there is ammo. And if there is, isn't any ammo, then it empties the weapon and returns the function and that empty weapon will unequip it and stop this weapon firing. Otherwise we tell the inventory that we've entered this state and then we play the animation and we set the refire timer to play the next animation. And when that animation is called it checks to see if the weapon needs to be put down at all during firing, like if you died or something and it puts down the weapon. Then it checks if you should refire as in you can refire uh, and you want to refire your weapon your the bounce button is still hold held down and then it so if you do want to do that then it sets the resets the hit array so you can do another swing plays plays that swing and sets the refire timer again and then if if you can't if you don't want to refire or can't refire then it just finishes firing and gets out of the weapon firing state then while this we are in this state, we are constantly checking between the world location and so between the start location and the end location of the weapon and tracing between it to see if we hit any actors. And bear in mind that 
when we're only in the weapon firing state when we're clicking, when we're holding, when we are wanting to attack, when the animation will be playing. So while the animation is playing, we are tracing. And when we finish the anim, when we finish, when we uh, start this, we do got a little thing here just to make sure it resets the animation. Uh, and there's a few things we need to set in the default properties. Uh, there's the weapon fire type. At the moment, it'll be set to uh, instant fire. We don't want that. We want uh, custom because we don't want anything interfering with our uh, weapon weapon code. So we do this for both fire modes. Unless, of course, you want to make some kind of weapon which has a melee attack and a an instant fire. That's actually a cool idea. And we also need to set the uh, sockets to the name of the sockets in that we set in the socket manager in Unreal in the editor. And now if we compile this, it should work. Oh, let's see if we're getting errors first. Yep, on line 53. 53. Oh, I've spelled function wrong. Let's try that again. And on line 71. Parameter 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, class, oh, that yeah, needs to be damage type, silly me, stick, underscore, underscore, damage. And on 79, we've got unrecognized member, find anum node. And now that's all done. Let's compile it. Oh, that's uh, weapon fire types. What type? All right, just just for the sake of testing, I'm going to put the damage up to 100. So the damage to 50. So if two hits should kill it. So let's. Gotta compile that. Alright, so we spawn one, give ourselves the stick weapon, and spawn one bot in. It should kill him. Yeah. Let's see, kill that. See, it's even impacting now. That's new from all the videos I had. I can just kind of hold it down and let it do its thing. Just whacking them on the head with a stick. So yeah, that's how you implement a very simple melee weapon. There are other ways of doing it, I'm sure, but this is one of my ways and it can be adapted in any way you see fit. And that's it. Uh, follow me, remember to subscribe to my channel and I will be posting more videos of prototypes I make and possibly more tutorials. Um, follow me on Twitter for all my ramblings and uh, more updates on what I do. I love using Twitter. And yeah, and view my website as well. Thank you. Bye.